Hey class, in the previous video, we have introduced that the most memorable period of Chinese medicine. In this video, we're going to introduce the, a new year after 1949. After 1949, the Chinese medicine at present. After 1499, why we use it for 1949 as a timeline? A separate of a timeline that's because the new China, the People's Republic of China, was established in the year of 1949. That's the China today. After the, the establishment of the new China, there was many bills that had have, have been changed towards Chinese medicine. For example, the bills of a, abandoned Chinese medicine have been stopped. Is that that's the new principles and policies for promotion of Chinese medicine has been promoted. We're going to discuss this new era from these aspects, the principles, policies, clinical applications, the higher education, scientific research, press, publication, and academic associations. Production of scientific research. In 1950, so one year after the establishment, actually only a few months, the reason is because the new China, the People's Republic of China, was established on the 1st of October 1949. So after two months, that's 1950. In the first National Health Work, Work Conference, the president at that time, President Mao, appealed as three principles facing the workers, facing the farmers. We need to help, we need to support, we need to unite with the workers and farmers. Prevention, we need to prevent diseases. We need to unite traditional medicine and Western medicine. So these have been put in as a principle even today. In 1982, the new charging law revised by the Fifth National People's Congress. The development of modern medicine and Chinese medicine should be carried out. So whenever the modern medicine is the conventional medicine and Chinese medicine has been emphasized in the constitution of China. In order to better develop Chinese medicine, the state the administration of Chinese medicine was established in 1985 to manage the development of Chinese medicine. And a few years ago, the law of Chinese medicine, law of Chinese medicine was published, was, was passed, accepted and published. So this was the first law on Chinese medicine specifically. I'm not quite sure which year, 2017 or 18. So that's only recent years. The clinical practice of Chinese medicine in all different levels. Before 1980s, Chinese medicine were carried out in all different levels in the village in the rural areas, in the county, in the town, in the cities, play an important role in public health. General hospital, such as the hospital similar to life or net care in South Africa, all these kinds of public hospital, general hospital, will have Chinese medicine and acupuncture department. By 1980, most county cities said that Chinese medicine hospitals and scientific research institutions in their hospitals. So these are all the developments. The higher education. Sorry, there's another. This is the statistic in 2017, three years ago. There were 4,566 
Chinese medicine hospitals. 49,632 Chinese medicine clinics and 45 Chinese medicine research institutions. 1.2 billion Chinese medicine consultation performed in the year of 2017. The higher education. In 1956, four colleges of Chinese medicine were established in Beijing, Shanghai, Chengdu, Guangzhou, and Nanjing Traditional Chinese Medicine School were transformed to Nanjing Traditional Medicine College. And later on, all these colleges were upgraded into Chinese medicine universities from this year's and nowadays there were more than 20 Chinese medicine universities in China already 30 so more than 20 30 higher education is universities 50 secondary Chinese medicine schools so the one secondary Chinese medicine schools they also train Chinese medicine and acupuncture practitioners, but they don't have a degree. Postgraduate students were trained in the universities since 1979. In 2018, 25 universities and at different levels. The Statistic comes from 25 universities. 911,000 students, 234,000 graduated students. So these are the higher education. The scientific research, these researches carried, carried was, were carried out in the universities, in the Research Institute. The first one was established in 1955. China Academy of Chinese Medicine Sciences. Now more than 60 research institutions. And all these institutions carry out the responsibility of scientific research in Chinese medicine. In order to promote and educate people with Chinese medicine, the Chinese medicine press, publications, and associations were established. These are the modern research in Chinese medicine. This was from Fujian University of Traditional Chinese Medicine, the space casual. So what happens to here is, According to Chinese medicine, we use observation, we use the technique of observation, taking pulse to diagnose diseases. So in this space casual, the patient is sitting on, on the chair, there will be one camera. We take a picture of the patient's face, and once the system will generate the analysis from the, system, from the observation of the face. We use a sensor to test the the pulse, the, to test the pulse condition. We use the modern technique, such as the cameras, to for computer analysis, also for the herbal medicine, scientific research in pharmacology of Chinese herbal medicine is also conducted in a modern scientific way. Uh, there you go, 2016, the law of the Chinese medicine. So the one I mentioned, the law of Chinese People's Republic of China on traditional med Chinese medicine. This was the first law on Chinese medicine. It was passed, passed in 2016. This picture of the Fujian University of Traditional Chinese medicine 
that's the library library that's the lecturing hall lecturing halls here is the chinese one of the example of chinese medicine hospitals Guangdong provincial hospitals all skyscrapers that's inside of the Fujian provincial hospitals the chinese medicine departments here is the nurse the nurse the, the nurse station. So these just give you a, as an example how does China, how does Chinese medicine education, how does Chinese medicine clinical practices and hospitals look like? These are also the examples of Chinese medicine hospitals. This hospital is in Guangdong province in in southern part of China in Shenzhen. So these are the, the wards. This is this is their consultation rooms. This uh, this is the the museum in this hospital for the herbal medicine. These are the museums. The rehabilitation center that's in the ward. This this uh, this is the consultation room. The clinical practices. So that's how Chinese medicine students study. A practitioner is when seeing patient, a group of students will stand or sit behind to see the to observe. That's how you gain your clinical experience. The Chinese medicine in the wards. So similarly, the practitioner will see the patient with a group of students. That's how you get your experience from so also in future when you have the chance to go to clinics to observe the more the better that's the only way to gain your experience this is a um, discussion between a practitioner with the students this lady she was a very she's a very famous practitioner in beijing she this year she's 92 she's still practicing still still teaching students seeing patients chinese medicine abroad this is a this is a very interesting topic as chinese medicine is not only practiced in china today it is widely practiced in different countries all over the world there are 202 countries 183 countries has acupuncture uh, have have acupuncture practice. People, different races, the Chinese, black, the white, Indian, different races, different areas, different students. So that's how you learn. There are many countries that formally accept Chinese medicine, especially for acupuncture. For example, Thailand, Singapore, Indonesia, Korea, Korea, Israel. 
these countries, some of the countries assess Chinese medicine, fully assess Chinese medicine, such as Thailand. Some and Korea, Korea, Korea. They although they call Korea medicine, but they are actually exactly the same as Chinese medicine. Other countries such as Burma, Nepal, British, Germany, Austria, Italy, Holland, Denmark, Russia, Holland, Australia, all these countries. And when we talk about Africa, in 1975, Egypt accepts Chinese medicine. In South, South Africa, Chinese medicine and acupuncture were practitioners were re requested to be registered with the Allied Health Professional Council of South Africa from 2001. So this council is the, the council that you are going to register in future after your graduation. In order to practice acupuncture in South Africa, you have to register with this council, AHPCSA. We've almost arrived at the end of the brief journey of Chinese medicine. We will use a few lectures to introduce thousands of years of development of Chinese medicine. Hope from this journey, this short introduction, you will have a clear image or in, an impression of Chinese medicine. I also hope you will learn from this information for your future study and answer your confusions if you have any. Thank you for your attention and hope you will enjoy the short journey.